And uh, we'll be taking you to uh, the Flagstaff House shortly where President Okufuado is expected to swear in uh, the ministers designate who have been approved by Parliament. Well, before that, the dream of a 20-year-old school dropout to return to the classroom hangs in the balance after she lost all her property, including cash, in a fire outbreak at Swami Magazine. Jennifer Kolog had saved 1,100 Ghana CDs in preparation for a journey back to northern Ghana for second cycle education. Now, just the day before she had scheduled to begin the trip, disaster struck on Wednesday. Prince Apia visited her together with other homeless victims and filed this report. The fire that occurred on Wednesday raked down all the structures in the slum at the Swami Magazine Industrial Hub. Jennifer is one of the over 400 squatters who lived here. They had traveled all the way from Bogatanga in the Upper East region in search of greener pastures. Now, they are compelled by circumstances to contend with the slum. I, I went to school. I finished school on 2013 and then I got Navasco Senior High School. But there was no money. My father too died immediately. And then my brother too died. My mother is not even there again. So I'm st I was staying with my stepmother. She did not even get money for me to go to school again. So that was why I came here. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. My plans of here was, I, I was trying to come here and get, so that I will get money. If God bless, I will get money and go back. So if God bless, I will go to school again. But when I came here, I was just planning of how to get money. And I was selling water. The money I get was only, uh, this thing, 1,100 Ghana cities. And then 1,100 Ghana cities. That was uh, the day before yesterday. I went and brought that, the money. I went and took the money from the bank and I brought it. I was thinking that maybe Monday I'll go. I'll go home again. So, so that I'll go and do it and continue my education. And then when I was not there, I went out to sell water. I came, everything was just burned. Even without even 10 pesos. I didn't even get any 10 pesos from it. So all my money gets burned. Even in Islam, Jennifer cohabits with a man, not as a wife, but just for shelter. She has been selling iced water in the Swami Enclave since 2014 when she arrived in Kumase. Her mission was to raise money to enable her return to school to keep her dream of becoming a nurse alive. Nobody was there to help me. And then I wrote a letter for uh, this in Afrikis. Nobody was able to help me. And I wrote a letter for DCE in Nangodi. And then NPP for uh, this thing, NPP MP. So nobody was able to help me, and I came here. When I came here, I was thinking that if God bless, I will get money so that maybe this 2017 I will continue my education. So what I got was 1,100 Ghana cities. And then because of that, I was thinking that maybe Monday I will go home, I will go, I will go to my hometown again so that I will continue my education. So immediately, I was not in at the room, so I went out. I came that immediately the fire got burned everything with my money. Now, she has nothing. Homeless Jennifer, who has a one and a half year old child, is in no mood to back down on her dreams. When, uh, when I wrote, I got science too. I got science too. So I was thinking to become a nurse in future. Jennifer's situation is one of many young girls who migrate to the south for a better life. What is left for the inhabitants of this area is the ashes, you see. I'm told the landlords of this area have warned that they won't allow anybody to rebuild the structures here. This means that these residents who have traveled all the way from their hometowns to settle here are going to continue the struggle. My name is Prince Apia, reporting.
a really a sad story there. Now, the Verdun Committee has laid their report before Parliament. Uh, the House is yet to debate the contents of the report. Our parliamentary correspondent, Joseph Apukugapo, has a copy of the report which recommends the confirmation of all 13 nominees. And uh, he joins us live from Parliament with more details. Now, Joseph, um, at the time we spoke during midday, uh, we, the, we were not too clear on whether uh, the minority in Parliament will pass a senior minister-designate Mr. Yao Safamafo and energy minister-designate Bwachi Chapu. Well, over concerns uh, they had raised about, they clarifying some statements they had made during the event. And so what happened? Now all 13 have been confirmed for approval. Hello, Joseph, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. All right, I was saying and that... so um, we are live from... No, you can go ahead, Joseph. Yes, yeah, so um, as I speak to you, the house is on recess. There isn't much happening on the floor. Um, a little over an hour ago, the Speaker of Parliament um, gave a break to members of the house for 30 minutes so that then they would go come back and debate the second report of... Parliament's Appointment Committee on the President's first batch of ministerial nominees. Um, just before the break, the Majority Leader of Seiche Mensa Buntu laid the document in question on the floor of the House. Uh, we have access to a copy of it, which is the uh, second report of the Appointment Committee on His Excellency the President's uh, nominations for ministerial appointments. And so it's when the House resumes sitting that they would be debating this particular document. But uh, we have some details from it, and those details include uh, the disclosure in the report that uh, the nominations were for the following five persons, Yawasafo, Mafo, uh, the senior minister designate, Mr. Boatier Jacon, the minister designate for energy, Opoku Prempe, the minister designate for education, the health minister designate, Kweku Ajiman, Menu and also Dr. Akutu Uswafriye, who is the Minister Designate for Agriculture. In fact, this report, which is a 24-page report, is recommending that all the five persons are approved, except that when it comes to Mr. Boachie Jacon and also um, the uh, other person, the Senior Minister Yao Safumafo, the committee's report indicates that the approval for them was not given by consensus. Let me just read to you briefly. A portion of the report. These are the conclusion versions of the report and it says that the committee has duly considered the nominations of His Excellency the President for Ministerial Appointments in line with the 1992 Constitution and the standing orders of the House. The committee finds that all the nominees meet the qualification criteria as set out in Article 78, 1, 91, 1, and 2 of the Constitution. Further, all the nominees demonstrated through their answers to questions posed to them by members of the committee that they have intellectual capacity, skill, experience, and the requisite training to assist the president in the determination of general policy of the government and necessary for the efficient running of the state, as envisaged in Article 76 and 78 of the Constitution. Now, this is the interesting paragraph in this report that I speak of. It says that notwithstanding the foregoing, members of the minority of the committee have indicated that they do not support the recommendation to approve Honorable Osafo Mafo, the senior minister designate, and Mr. Boatia Jako, the energy minister designate by consensus. Consequently, in accordance with Order 172 of the Standing Orders of the House, the committee recommends that the House approves their nomination. And so the indication is that the minority disagreed with um, the plan to give approval for these persons. The majority to their ground. Eventually there was a vote. And at the level of the appointment committee, the majority carried the vote. And so the committee as a whole is recommending the approval of this, these persons, Osafo Mafu and Boatia Jako, although it was not by consensus. And so we wait to see how the debate will go and whether the general house will give approval for this document coming from the appointment committee of parliament and hence which will then mean that the said people will either be uh, approved or otherwise after the general house has completed debating this document all right joseph now we know that uh, the issue over 
uh, a proven senior minister designate, uh, Mr. Yao Safo Mafo, and energy minister designate, uh, Boatia Jako, has been in the news for some time. And it was because uh, the, the committee wanted them to clarify and uh, give uh, documents and evidence to certain statements they had made during the event. Now, we know that those documents were provided. Chairman of the committee, Jose Wusu, mentioned that. So is it that the minority is not satisfied with those clarifications? That's exactly the case that it appears as though the minority was not exactly satisfied with um, the kind of documents and the kind of responses that these persons provided even after um, they were asked to submit documents to back the issues. Um, this report captures a few versions of it. For example, when it comes to the alleged issue of the ethnocentric comments that Mr. Yosafumafo is alleged to have made, uh, this document actually, uh, you know, uh, quotes the response that he gave and let me read that to you that um, according to this report when they quizzed Mr. Yosafumafo on the issue of the alleged ethnocentric comment he said that uh, in response to his uh, alleged ethnocentric comment he made during the 2016 electioneering campaign in the eastern region the nominee explained that as the battle for the election centered on the economy he met with some party members and discussed how poorly the country was being managed he said after talking about the state of the economy and the causes of the economic challenges he did state that the resource base of the country is located in five regions of the country and that the nominee believes that it is this aspect of his statement that has been distorted by some people to create the bad impression that he made an ethnocentric comment. So uh, the report captures his response to that. This is what they needed further clarification on. We know that they demanded, uh, the committee members demanded that they get access to some newspapers and even some audio recordings to really be satisfied that the said comments were not ethnocentric. But looks like the minority were not satisfied with the kind of responses that came but the majority who are uh, those with the higher numbers on the committee went ahead to push through his approval all right thank you very much joseph opokugapo my colleague reported live from parliament we'll be following this issue keenly and bring you updates uh, as and when they are available the polls